Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Carter Street Talk. Today, I am joined by Caitlin Chen, um, also known as Small Hand Things on Instagram. Did I, I said the name right, right? Yeah. Okay, I probably should have checked on that before we started. <laughs> um, but, uh, yep, we're here with Small Hand Things on Insta. Um, I'm going to just jump into some questions for her. I'm really excited to have you on. Um, is there Good anything, or would you like to introduce yourself uh, to anybody, I guess? Um how do I, how should I do this? Um, my name's Caitlin. Um, not many people know what I look like, so this is what I look like. You probably recognize my hands. Um, but yeah, I've been doing cardistry for like four years now consistently. Um, and I, I actually started with magic, so there was that transition period that I don't really consider mm-hmm. when I count that, but yeah. Yeah, so one of my first questions was, like, um, your your first, like, account was kind of, like, it was Magic Center, is that right? Yeah, it was. So you started in Magic. How long did you do Magic before, like, you kind of switched over? Um, well, I still do Magic. It's just, for me personally, I find it really difficult to post Magic because it's, like, people can be really hypercritical about what you post if it's regarding Magic. Like, they'll be like, oh, you should have done this, or... Um, you probably you flashed something like that and because my hands are like a little bit smaller than i'd like them to be it's kind of hard for me to do a lot of sleight of hand Mm -hmm. um so i'm better at performing in person so when i created the account i was like strictly just doing magic and i just discovered cardistry so that's why i had the name the magic center because i thought i would be all like into magic and just strictly magic but i noticed that i just started posting cardistry because it was easier to film and practice on my own so like uh, so you still do magic like what's kind of split is it like 50 50 you do a little little bit of both or in terms of practicing i only p- practice cardistry um but then when i know that i'm going to be meeting up with like a friend or if i'm going to like some sort of get together with people i usually learn a new trick or prepare a new trick just so then i have something to show mm-hmm. that's cool i'm always like curious like the split of like how much people do magic versus cardistry when they do both because like it's kind of hard to tell because they interweave so much mm-hmm. yeah um, it's definitely so, harder to practice magic when you're at home alone unless you have people to perform to mm-hmm. so, which is probably why most people who are split they practice more cardistry yeah i mean cardistry it can be hard too um unless you like video record yourself like to know what something looks like from the viewer's point. Yeah. Um, so obviously your username is small hand things. Um, cause mainly cause you have small <laughs> hands, right? <laughs> a little bit. I, yeah. I, I would say so. <laughs> yes. Um, have you ever met anyone that does cardistry that has like smaller hands? Um, honestly, not that I know of, even when I went to cardistry con, there was someone that was like significantly younger than me. They were like 12 or something. And his hands were bigger than mine. (laughs) Like, he made it a point that it was bigger than mine because he would come up and he'd be like, look, my hands are bigger than hers and, like, show his parents. Um, And I thought that was really funny. Um, But as of right now, I don't think I've met anyone who has smaller hands than me Mm -hmm. who does cardistry. My little cousins don't really count, but they're two. Yeah, that's funny. I was wondering about that because, like, um, I do see, like, the little kids and, like, the cardistry videos and stuff, and I'm like, I don't know how it compares. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when you first were starting out to learn uh, cardistry and magic, um, what was kind of like some of the difficulties with having small hands or overcoming it? If that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so when I first started with magic, I think the biggest flex or one of the biggest flexes were like either your classic pass like being able to palm a card Mm -hmm. and I couldn't do either of them um I know the classic pass is more of like you don't really have to conceal it you just have to like um be able to distract the other person so then they don't see it it doesn't have to be completely like invisible um it's just I can never get the the thing to like clear (laughs) and like do that um and then to palm a card it's like my hands just it just doesn't work because if I do this there's a the card's sticking out and then there's like that 
Mm-hmm. Um, so it was with that. And then when it came to cardistry, it was just all of these like stretching to reach a certain thing or even just spinning a packet like in between my hand like this. I can't do that. So I couldn't do anything that required like spinning the packet. Otherwise it gets caught. Um, so how I overcame like all of those is I just don't do the classic pass. Um, I don't palm a card and I don't do this. So it's just, I don't, I don't do it, but to overcome this, I kind of like hold it in the middle and then spin it and then regrip. So I found my way around that. Um, and for cardistry specifically, it's a little bit easier to like get away with smaller hands because you can come up with your own moves and your own variation with things. Um, and there's no like flashing like compared to magic because if your hands are too small, sometimes you might flash. Um, so I think there's a bonus with that for cardistry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One of the questions I had was, is there any moves that you like, genuinely can't do because of the small hands? Would you kind of already answer that a little bit? Yeah, there's quite a few, actually. Um, I can't do mantra. A lot of people think I can, um, which I don't know why, but I can't do it. Um, and L cuts, I can't really do them, but I've come up with my own variation for them, and it works. So with uh, coming up with like, the variations and like... Um, is it is it some somewhat easier to get creative um, having the limitations there if that makes sense? Um, yes and no. Yes and no. I've used mini decks before to see, and I have been able to do like different moves. Because um, judo flip, for some reason, I've just always wanted to learn it, but I just it just doesn't work. Um, so then I I have a mini deck that someone sent me as a gift because they knew I had small hands. I don't know if it was for a joke or what, but I ended up using it and I learned judo flip on there. Um, and then I realized there were just so many applications you can do with like a whole like spinning packet. So I'm limited to that. But in terms of creativity, because I can't do certain people's moves, it forces me to like think outside the box. And then it's really helped me come up with my own moves based off of like other moves that I can't do. Mm-hmm. You kind of have to look at something from a different angle than yeah what exactly. a normal person would which is good uh when trying to create something um getting that unique perspective is very important mm-hmm. um so with uh with your moves um would you want to show one and kind of describe it um on camera does that make sense yeah um let's see um i'll show one of the first ones that i've ever come up with I don't know how well you can see that, um, but that one's called Water Slide. And oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> my thought process with that was I've always been obsessed with like moves that had like some sort of like side angle because most cardistry moves come like start from like these shorter edges and not the longer edges. So I wanted something like this. Um, so I just messed around with like the Z grip, but like here on the side. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I came up with just like rotating it and the rest of the move kind of just happened to be honest like I didn't really have to think and the rest of the move just came together and I think that's one of my proudest moves because it 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 just made itself basically Mm -hmm. have you like when you do you go like to sit down do you like sit down and like I'm going to create a move or does it just kind of happen natural or is there a way that you get into that that process personally um so my moves are created like 50 50 where it's like i am planning on making a move and then the the other half is like i'm not planning on making a move and i just do something cool that i like um so when i actually am trying to make a move i specifically this is kind of a weird way of doing it but it works um i stay up really late until my brain is like shut off because then like my my mind's not like overthinking what i want to do with my hands and it's just my hands working and so um I just do that and it just so happens that my best moves are created like that um and I think it's because you're not limiting your creativity by overthinking um the process you're just freely doing whatever um and with that I always have to film what I'm doing because I'm so tired like I'm tired out of my mind that I just can't remember what I do um and that always helps me remember and recreate the moves like the next day Mm -hmm. 
I'm I I'm the exact same way. Like most of my moves get created around like like twelve to two, uh, twelve yeah. to two uh, a.m. And it's like it's always like I want to go to bed, but like I'm in this zone and I'm like I don't want to stop. <laughs> so I'll wake up the next morning and be a zombie, but I can't stop. <laughs> so yeah, I'm I'm the exact same way. And like for the most part, like I'll have like ideas in my head of something I want to create but I won't know how to do it. And then someday it'll just happen. And I'll be like, oh, mm-hmm. sweet. <laughs> um, it's funny though, that you showed off water slide. I just like recently made a move like a couple of days, ago, not a couple of days ago, a couple of weeks ago now. And I called it water slide. So. <laughs> oh, seriously? Yeah. So I might need to rename it, but um, I don't know if I can get this in frame. Yeah, let's see. But I'll show it off here. Um, so it's just a variation on the, um, schmear fan, but you twist it and then you can, this isn't the best deck. You twist it and then you can push up with your, uh, fingers and just repeat the slide motion. Oh, whoa. I honestly feel like your move just suits the name better because it's like actually sliding down something. Yeah. But um, I was just created for like the closer because I don't even remember how it goes. Um, hold on, my deck is all messed up. I don't know what happened. Uh, but the main reason why it was named Water Slide was because someone told me that it just fits like this motion of just that. Um, and yeah, yeah, it's always hard to at least like name a move. Yeah, you kind of just give it a lot of times just a random thing like, yeah i've given up at really this point good. naming moves what was that i've given up at this point with naming moves mm-hmm. i i often i'll ask other people just because i'm like i'm just gonna call it something random like mosquito or something that has nothing <laughs> to do with it just because i don't know what to call it yeah um so you've been in the community now for a while you said you started in like 2016 um You've gotten to interact with a lot of people, uh, Koa Adventures, I'm a Pretty Cool Dude, Mm -hmm. um, Organic, a lot of brands as well. Um, How important is it to you to interact with the community and kind of uh, how have you benefited from being a part of it? Um, I think it's really important because it's like these people understand like the whole like card, just like cleat, what is it? I don't know. You'd get what I mean. It's like... They, they just have sat in their room playing with cards um, mm-hmm. and they get that whole thing. Whereas like my friends from like just school or whatever, they don't really understand it. So it's nice to have like that friendship over cards and someone else to like just nerd out about playing cards and like cardistry and magic. Um, and I also think it's really important just interacting with anyone, not just like the friendships that I've made but like anyone who just reaches out because it's like if they're just starting out um it's always good to make them feel welcome the way that I've been welcomed into the community um and the way I've benefited is um I've just made like really good friendships through it like some of my closest friends are through cards um and I've actually found a few of them who live really close to me and we were able to like meet up and host jams and stuff like that um and on top of that I would get messages sometimes like from people saying that like I've inspired them because my hands are so small and it makes them like believe they can do it and I think that's like a really nice message it's like a really um heartwarming message to get um seeing that I've made someone like want to continue with cardistry or I've made them um inspired to keep going Um, Because I know the struggle of wanting to give up because your hands are just too small and you just can't do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. I think that's probably like the, one of the biggest, like common complaint people will come up with when they're starting to learn cardistry. Like Mm -hmm. my hands are too small. I know I thought that uh, when I was trying to learn a Charlie or cut, like most people. And then like they, you have, you have you that we can like show them, like you can do it. (laughs) She can do it. You can do it. Um, so no, that's, that's really cool, um, that you've gotten messages and have heard that from the community. That's awesome. Um, so one of the most, uh, recent, uh, interactions you've had with the community is, uh, the 
Aspire cards, the Flatliners. Would you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, it's actually the deck that I'm using right now. Um, so how Flatline came about was my friend Troy. Um, he designed it with like some someone else. Uh, it was someone else's idea, and then he designed it. But then um, Troy ended up taking like, I guess, taking the project over. And so he was going on with the project. He finished designing everything. Uh, but then it was just a lot of work. So he took a break from it for a bit. But then one of my friends, his name is also Caleb, actually. He ended up messaging me, asking me who like created the deck. And that's kind of how like the team came about, where it was like Troy, Caleb, and me. And I'm more so of like their... Um, like their content creator type of person Mm -hmm. where I kind of find who to sponsor and then create my own content. Um, So I was in the trailer actually, which should be coming out soon. And yeah, so the three of us have been working on the deck. Um, Troy's been like the main part of the whole thing because he designed the whole thing. He customized the courts, which I'll see if I can pull one up for you. And I, I don't know, something about the courts just like, really appeal to me Mm -hmm. Um, because they're like unique um, yet they're simple enough for me to for it to like go with the deck oops why are there (laughs) Um, and fun fact it's actually my handwriting that the uh, pips are based off of so I wrote out a bunch of like I wrote out like the ace to kings and then Troy just traced over them on his like program that's cool um yeah, um, just so everybody knows, too, I'll, whenever that, that trailer drops, I'll have it on the description as well as any uh, links exactly. to any of uh, her, Kaylin Chen's and Small Hand Things um, stuff in the description. So make sure to check that out. Um, since we're on the topic of talking about the uh, community and uh, people in it, is there a dream collab that you would want to have with anybody? It could be a designer, oh, a, a pers- performer, anything. Hmm. That's a good question. Um, I think I've always wanted to be part of an Orbit Jam. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that would be cool, but it would also be really cool to be featured on a Fontaine video. Um, Because when I first started, my first deck of cards was actually Blue Fontaines. Like, that was the first ever custom deck of cards I've ever gotten. Um, And, like, it was surprisingly not illusionist, right? Um, So I think because that's where like this whole thing just started it would be cool if i like ended up being in a fontaine video Mm -hmm. um because i just got into it watching fontaine videos which made me buy like blue fontaines and it was kind of like that whole um domino effect that just led me up to here Mm. so come full circle kind of yeah yeah awesome yeah um i love orbit as well um fontaine's good too but um so how um i want to talk about now your personal deck that you made recently um (laughs) do you want to talk about that or not (laughs) but um where i put it (laughs) yeah um um, so are you cool talking about that yeah okay um Um, how how did kind of the the uh design um idea come about (laughs) um so back like 2018 2019 i don't i actually don't know it was like last year or the year before um when tiny chat was like very like prevalent in the community like it was just like the go-to place to just hop on and then other cardists would just be on at the same time and you would just talk to them so it's similar to like a zoom call basically but um it's just like a website and whoever's on is on um and if you hop on at like a, the right time other people will be on too mm-hmm. and so i was just on and um my friend aldo w- took a screenshot of me <laughs> i i was just playing around and i put it like one of those mail like bubble mailers on my head and i just like went like this like for a brief second like not even a second And Aldo just happened to take a screenshot. I didn't know this. And he held on to it for months until my birthday, which was uh, May 7th. And this happened last year. 
and he posted it on his story and he made every single person that I knew uh, post it on their story and change their profile picture. So then me just going like this with a bubble mailer on my head became a meme like for a long time. And um, after like a certain period of time, I think after like 25 people changed their profile picture, my friend Pablo ended up taking that and then putting it on like a back design and he posted it on his story. He's like, huh, what if this was a deck of cards? So I just saved it and I'm like, you know what? This would be kind of funny if I just like made it um, for Cardistry Con. So I messaged my friend Spencer, who's a designer, um, and he helped me do that. Um, and then that's pretty much how the deck came about. It was just because of a joke, like a simple like this and then posting it on like people's story on my birthday just to embarrass me. Um, sucks for them, though. I just owned it. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, so then I made like one prototype intending to bring it to Cardi Khan, but it just didn't print in time. So then I just held on to it for a whole year, not releasing like what the back design actually looks like um, unless they saw it on Pablo's story and making people react to it. Because I wanted to like do something funny, like make some well-known people react to it and have such a like have a genuine reaction. But like knowing what the deck is, you would know that they would like hype it up in like a really intense way. Mm-hmm. So then once I actually released the design, everyone was like, wait a second. <laughs> and I don't know. I thought that whole process was just like a fun like joke to like just, you know, for the community. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely a unique deck. Um, <laughs> Let me see if I can find it somewhere on my desk so I can show it. Um, so do you think there's a market for like meme type of decks like <laughs> in a bigger scale than what? What's what you've done? Um, uh, yeah, you can show off the cards sure. if you'd like to oh, as yeah. well. Let's, let's do that. So there's this. So this was just from Tiny Chat. You can see my name just on there, which is what makes it so funny. Because that's just how Tiny Chat was. You have your name at the bottom. So they didn't even bother to like take that out. Um, but there definitely is a market for like joke decks. I think Kevin Ho has cr- like created a whole like bunch of different ones like he has like jerry's from ebay which is j- literally like a screen clipping of uh, a jerry's like being sold on ebay um mm-hmm. rather than like the jerry's back design and i thought that was so funny um and then he has like the sideways deck which is like a normal bicycle deck is printed like this but he printed it like this way so it's like wider yeah um he showed him off honestly, in like an interview at one point i think yeah that might have been with burger or something i can't remember but yeah, yeah i remember seeing those um he has a lot and i think it's something that i feel like we should be doing more for the community because it's, it's always nice to have like a joke deck just to like for like the inside jokes that go behind it um and it's like you don't have to like take cards so seriously all the time Mm-hmm. yeah I, th- I wish that there was more uh, kind of ridiculous out there, mm-hmm. not serious decks that we could we could play around with. Um, obviously, you can kind of make your own with make playing cards like you've kind of done here. Um, would you want to talk about kind of your experience uh, using make playing cards to uh, sell your deck? Because this is something I haven't really seen before, at least yeah. for me personally. Um, the whole make playing cards like experience is like, very difficult um the website is just a little bit difficult to like navigate around and it's kind of slow and glitchy um and honestly if you don't place the card right the first time adjusting it is like a pain um but once you get that done everything else is like easy um so what i decided to do was um there were two options whether you can like buy straight from the website um which i didn't benefit from uh because i just didn't want to like overcharge like the insane NPC prices that were already like there. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that would be like the equivalent of me ordering for them. Um, And it's not as difficult as you might think. You just say like, make this, like publish this project or something like that, make it available. Um, And then all you have to do is wait for them to approve it. And then you're pretty much set. Cool. So... Yeah, I was wondering because it's just I haven't seen anything where like through make playing cards where you can just like select someone else's design 
I didn't know that was an option. So I, I just thought it was interesting. Um, yeah. Is there any uh, plans to make another deck, whether it be serious or ridiculous uh, in the future or? Um, yeah. So I have um, my friend Troy, um, since he's a designer, we kind of decided that we'll kind of continue with making playing cards after Flatline. Um, but like on our own, kind of just to, because he has so many ideas and I feel, and I've told him in the past that we should do it but he's always been skeptical. And I feel like um, if everything goes well with Flatline, we kind of have a better idea with how playing cards like are created and how everything runs. So there's definitely a lot more um, in store, um, but we just have to wait until like the project launches for these and like get all of this stuff done first. So after August 1st, which is when these launch, um, we'll, we'll plan more for that. Mm-hmm. Um, so how, how far along kind of is the project and how, how has the reaction been to, uh, the Flatliners? Um, it's been going pretty good actually. Um, so th we're almost done the Kickstarter page, just a couple more like fine details, um, and figuring out the add-ons, um, and stretch goals and stuff like that. We figured out who we're printing with, how many we're printing and, We've already got the decks out to our sponsors, uh, and everyone's been reacting pretty good to it. Uh, so I'm excited to see w once we actually launch the project how everything goes. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, we'll see how it goes. I hope hopefully it's positive. Obviously, hopefully. <laughs> um. Uh, so at the end of the show, I usually like to do a round of random questions. Um, rapid round of question. Um. So. This could be about anything and everything, um, cars related, not cars related. Um, so we'll just hop into that. I have on my phone, I just created this little, uh, it's not showing up very <laughs> well, but a wheel. <laughs> I think you just put it behind. But um, uh, a wheel full of random questions. So I'll just spin that. So these are completely random and not just off the top of my head like they have been in the past. All right, sounds um, good. So we'll start that, spin the wheel. Uh, first question is, what is your favorite movie if you have one? Would this be cl cliche if I said, now you see me? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but I genuinely like that movie. It was like the production and everything. I think I prefer Now You See Me too. So I'm going to say that. Cool. Keep magic related. Um, favorite restaurant? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Um, I'm going to say a fast food chain, uh, but Blaze Pizza. Where, uh, I've never heard of that. Where, is that um, like a locational thing? Or? Well, well, I live in Toronto and we have one here, but it's, I think they have one worldwide. They have quite a few in the U S as well. Okay, cool. Um, favorite deck of cards. Oh my gosh, this is difficult. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> You're really putting me on the spot. I'm going to have to say Diva V2. Um, something about how those cards handle and just the look of it. Um, I don't know if you've seen them before. And I don't no, know. I don't. I don't know. With me. I should somewhere on my desk. Oh, I do have one with me. If I can move it. Okay. They're, they look like this. Okay, I have seen those before. And yeah, because I think I just really like red, blue, and white. And then I think the silver here just adds to it. Um, so mm -hmm. these are probably my favorite cards to use. Yeah, it's a nice little abstract yeah. design. Okay, spin it. Okay, this is a good one. If you could have any superpower, what would it be? And would you use it for good or evil? <laughs> um, any so. type of superpower. Like, I get to choose. Yeah. Um, I think the ability to freeze time. Oh, no, 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 no. Obviously, the ability to control time, like go back in time or like go to the future. Um, so and I would travel. use it. Yeah, time travel. Wow, I didn't even know that term. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so tired. Um, yeah, um, I don't necessarily think this is for evil, or maybe it could be but it would be to go back in time for like card drops. 
<laughs> and like buy a bunch of like i don't know cherries back when they were like 50 cents or like buy a bunch of like other rare decks so then i would have an abundance now <laughs> mm-hmm. i'd say that's probably like chaotic neutral or like neutral yeah i don't think it's necessarily evil yeah. but it's you definitely not your knowledge <laughs> to your advantage exactly all right cool um Android or iPhone? iPhone. Straightforward. <laughs> um, favorite type of food? So just in a general. Ooh, that's tough. Um, I'm going to go with Japanese food. Solid. Yeah. All right. Um, this is a, a two-parter. Um, do you have a favorite unoriginal move, so a move you haven't created, and then a favorite move that you have created? Yeah, so my favorite unoriginal move is squeeze, because I think it's just like a classic move, and I just find myself always doing it, like just without even thinking. Um, favorite original move? That one's tough, um, but I think it's I don't have it. I have a name for it. I just can't pronounce it yet. So I'm still learning the pronunciation of the move. But I've n- I haven't released it yet. But it looks like this. Something along this line where it goes like this. I can't perform it that well right now because I just created it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I understand. Uh, but it goes like that. Something like that. Um, I think that would be my favorite at the moment. Um, mm-hmm. But I'm always creating, so it always changes. So what is what is what is it pronounced? Do you want to try? <laughs> Why is it so hard? <laughs> is what I'm curious about. If you don't want to, it's fine. Um, I I don't even. I'm gonna have to Google it to make sure that's even the right term because I can't even. Is it like a different language? Cerebus. Did I? No, no, that's not what I want. Cerebus. No, <laughs> I think it's cerebus. It's like the um. Wait, the, the, I have to Google it now. Greek dog, dog with three heads. Yeah. Cerber- Cerberus. Cerberus. Oh my gosh. I was I pronounced it wrong. I didn't even get anything close. I think yeah. that's how it's pronounced. But. Cerberus, yeah. Oh, watch, watch Hercules and you'll and we'll, you'll probably figure it out. <laughs> I didn't offend anyone by like saying it wrong there. Oh, people are going to be outraged, I'm sure. Oh man, I am so sorry. Please <laughs> do not attack me. Um, do you play video games and do you have a favorite if you do? Um, kind of and kind of not. I'm really bad at video games, but I have played Minecraft a couple times. Um, so I would, I guess I would say that would be my favorite. Mm -hmm. Um, but I get really mad at the game because I always die. (laughs) Yeah. Um, all right, spin this wheel. All right, here's another good one. Is there any food you eat that others might consider weird? <laughs> um, food? <laughs> Cow tongue? <laughs> tacos? Not, no, not tacos. Like cow tongue. Like, like the tongue of a cow. Yeah, I think they put it in some tacos. Do they? Yeah, I think they like cook it up and like... I, I, I think it, I don't know if it's just called cow tongues or if it has a different name. Oh no, it's just like the, the you can see the shape of the tongue. Oh no, it's pig tongue. <laughs> I don't know. I uh, okay, I've never heard of that. Um, let me see what we got. I did not load enough questions onto this. Is what I'm realizing now. <laughs> um, do you have a favorite musician or favorite genre? Um, right now I don't have a favorite mu- musician because I kind of take inspiration from like everyone, but I think my favorite genre would have to be indie music. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, last one, uh, Cam was very, uh, when he was on, he was very into this question. Um, toilet paper over or under? Oh my gosh. How long did he expend explaining this? Mine, it was quite would, a while, actually. <laughs> it was majority of the of the random question oh time. My God. Oh, okay. Then I'll I'll take as long. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, over, 
do people put it under does cam put it under i'm gonna judge him if he puts it under it's no he, he said he put it over in like um his uh his future wife's uh parents like put it under and it was driving him crazy oh. yeah my mom puts it under and it's like so annoying but i just flip it <laughs> all right oh well, caitlin thanks for being on um thanks for having it's been me. a it's been fun. I really appreciate you coming on. I think people will uh, really enjoy the talk. So thanks for being on. Yeah, um, is there anything you would like to say or anything to end it? Uh, should I say something inspirational? <laughs> or should I say something weird? Um, I'll, I'll say something a mix between the two. All right. Um, small hands do not define your capabilities of uh, doing cardistry. So don't give up. <laughs> wow. That's good. Like That's fine. That's uh, very inspirational. <laughs> um, yeah. Thanks for being on. Thank you guys for watching. I'll uh, see you guys uh, soon, hopefully. And uh, peace. Bye. <laughs>